Hello everyone, my name is Luke Lombard and I'm the Junior Executive of Special Programs for the Haskane Consulting Club this year. This is our third video of our first series, which is titled Steps. And today we're going to be specifically looking at the steps it takes to do different things in school, including extracurriculars, and how you can get involved outside of school and eventually get a job from those experiences. I wanna thank Ryan for being here today. And I also wanna start off by asking him our first question, which is a simple, who are you? Thanks, Luke, and very happy to be here. Uh, so maybe I'll do a quick self introduction. So my name is Ryan Fang. I'm currently working as a strategy consultant in our uh, strategy team at EY Consulting, EY Ernst & Young. Uh, I have a degree from the Haskins School of Business uh, with a major in business technology management, graduated over two and a half years ago from there. Um, speaking of, I'm, I'm just very glad that I'm part of this conversation that you're having with other past uh, team members. And I was one of those original founding members of the Haskins Consulting Club. Um, so in the beginning, it was like, very small group, very small kind of member base. And it's, it's great to see how this club has uh, grown so much. Um, and uh, I guess at work for now, I'm working uh, with my team at UI, kind of running a lot of st strategic projects, uh, working together to help our business or other clients in the society uh, solve a lot of uh, critical, pressing and complex issues, uh, but providing kind of st strategic insights and recommendations. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great to hear. We always like hearing from people who have started with the club and been able to watch it grow. Uh, I think, you know, as a younger student, only in my second year, I've realized that HCC is such a massive club and I can't imagine being it as small as it was only, you know, a few years ago. So that's great to hear and always exciting for myself and I think for a lot of our other members to hear about. So the first thing uh, that I kind of want to ask you as far as the content of the question goes is, could you talk a little bit to your first two years of school? So, uh, you know, talking about sort of your first year that you came into university and then moving into your second year, you know, how you tried to get involved or what you did, uh, what you saw other kids do maybe that you thought was interesting and just cover all those points for us. For sure. Uh, so for the first two years, I guess I, was, I wasn't as targeted when it comes to career directions. Um, I was very much trying to figure out if the major I picked was, was the right one for me, uh, trying to meet as many people on campus as possible. And back then, you know, the concept of having a career in the middle of school, doing a lot of internship and co-op uh, student programs, uh, that was still kind of new to me. And I was trying to explore those options and what that means to my degree. How does that complement and combine with my education? Um, so a lot of that was about talking to other students, uh, kind of thinking about what majors they are taking in, what companies out there are um, hiring students and what kind of programs, what are the requirements. Um, so I spend a lot of time really critical think, critically thinking about, you know, what is right for me? What do I want? Um, um, so I, I felt that was very helpful in setting the foundation for me later on um, to once I kind of started working in my internship and other programs and even doing the club work. Um, give me a sense of direction and by doing a lot of research and networking. For sure. And I really think uh, something that our members would be more interested in is you talk about how you weren't really sure the first two years as to what you wanted to go into. Uh, you kind of needed to do a little bit more discovery in that area. Is there anything that you found in those first two years that really helped you figure out what you want to do? Um, I would say definitely talking to those people who have been through this. So when I was in my first year, I remember networking with a lot of senior students uh, who were close to their graduation or have done some kind of corporate roles um, and kind of learning about their experience by going to different sectors, like either going to banks or oil and gas companies um, and kind of get a sense, you know, how things work out for them. Um, so kind of there were a few career paths some people want to take the accounting um, direction and getting into accounting firm and some others like have a more of a project management, oil and gas uh, background. Um, so that kind of, I guess, building on top of what other people have learned is always helpful. And the second thing is 
Um, don't be afraid, especially in your junior um, part of the education, being, don't be afraid to ask questions and ask sometimes even you think it's are stupid questions um, because nobody's going to judge you for, you know, asking those questions coming from a first, second year background. I reached out to a lot of professors, uh, asking school like advisors, uh, getting their perspectives on, you know, where are, what are some of the possible paths going forward and not necessarily all of their, their advice or applicable directly to me, but I do think those conversations help you filter out um, some, a lot of the noises out there um, and allow you to really focus on um, the, 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 the true path that you want to take down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great answer. I think hopefully that'll resonate with a lot of uh, people who decide to watch this and just kind of my final follow-up question on, on that same topic is, as I said before, you know, a lot of people are trying to figure out what they want to do. And you referenced a few of the different fields that are very typical, you know, you have accounting, you have finance. And do you think that it, it really is at the end of the day, more useful to find something that you really enjoy rather than just maintaining the status quo of going into something that you think is expected of you? And how do you think that choosing something that you really liked has maybe affected you now? Um, I, I think that that's a really good question, and I would like to uh, answer that with both sides of this. So essentially, ideally, we would all do something we're truly passionate about. And for those you know lucky people who found that early on, um, I would say that's that's great. And if they truly believe in that, they should keep pursuing and um, um, focusing on that, and then arranging their lives or careers or goals around that kind of direction. But the truth is many of us don't really know the answer until like a very later date. And we, we see or hear people switching careers uh, much later on, even after they graduate. So uh, I would also suggest our students to have some flexibility for themselves and not, to, not be too hard on getting things perfect. And in consulting, there's a saying that we always quote, don't let perfect get into the way of good. Um, essentially, you are, in school trying to fulfill a more holistic um, experience. And part of that is education, part of that is your, your career. Um, try to think broader and not just limit yourself to one possibility, uh, knowing that you're there also to experience, um, you know, the, the good education and the classes and all the experience that you're supposed to do in school. And if you like say, get into some kind of, um, club involvement or some corporate roles as an internship in, in the middle, and you're not really sure if that's right or not, I would say take it because it doesn't matter what it is at that moment, it always, almost always will come back uh, as a, a stepping stone for something more amazing for you. So try your best to learn from each experience. And I'm, I guarantee you there's always something to learn from every experience, even though it doesn't sound like it's part of, it's related to your major or it's not where you want to be in the future, but lots of skills that we do, especially like in consulting, they're all transferable skills that I learned in other industries and other involvements. So don't let the formality, the title, um, the name of that involvement get, um, don't focus too much on that, but rather what can you learn from each experience? And even as a student club executive, I picked up a lot of communication skills, skills to organize networking skills um, from just working with students. And those skills continue to contribute to my success in my current career, career today. Um, so so um, as a, to recap, my, my answer is both. Definitely pursue what, you, what you're happy about, but in case you're not even sure yet, um, don't get too fussed about it and then just do what you, what you have in front of you. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great answer. And I think something we often hear as students, uh, or at least I've heard a lot since I started going to university is any experience is good experience, uh, which is kind of funny because sometimes in the moment, you sure don't think that the experience is that great. But uh, no, I definitely think that, you know, you spoke to that point. And I think that's going to be really valuable hearing that from, uh, you know, someone who works who actually has a job is, and is employed and that kind of just reinforces that for our members who already believe that. So 
now that we've covered kind of the first two years of school, uh, could you maybe touch on the last few years, you know, how those differed, how maybe you decided to get involved, like you said, how you realized what you wanted to do and how you started to apply that? So thanks. That's a good question. And um, between my second and my third year of school, I started to get involved in um, some kind of um, co-op student or summer jobs. And that's when I started to plan my kind of school life to my professional life and thinking about what happens after I graduate. Uh, and thanks to the first two years where I was doing a lot of research and networking to figure out uh, what is right for me, what are the options, I had a really good foundation going to third year, knowing um, these few things are what I want to focus on. And I, sh like, like I don't want to set myself up for only one option going forward, but at the same time, I'm also filtering out uh, what won't work for me. So with a limited amount of time I had in my last year with school, uh, graduate, graduating kind of a situation and kind of looking for jobs after I graduate, um, I was more focused and emphasized on those things that truly matter to me. So getting involved in the Husky Consulting Club was definitely one of them and definitely my high, the highlight of the last year of my, my school. Uh, and networking and kind of reaching out to professionals from consulting to learn about their experience what was another one um, helping other students who are interested but don't really know how to get there uh, through a series of programs that were run on campus uh, also help and give me a sense of kind of accomplishment or purpose um, and yeah like I felt like a large portion of my energy my time was spent on something that I can really still relate to today uh, and that largely thanks to the early um, kind of research networking and critical thinking about what I want to do in my um, early part of my education yeah no I, I think all your points uh, hopefully will resonate with a lot of people again who decide to watch this um, and you know you talk about how you got involved with HCC mm -hmm. and how you started to kind of pick up in between your second and third year. And how did you see these experiences directly affect your uh, future employment and even some of your short-term employments? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think at a high level, the first thing um, is being part of a community, uh, building the network and, and kind of similar-minded people around you and having that kind of support is um, very inspiring. I think from the foundation of this, um, that's where, what really inspired me in all the difficulties that I had to go through, um, kind of keep me going. So that's something I, I still feel very appreciative of uh, this experience. And specifically talking about like the skills or uh, the networks that I built as part of this club involvement. I think I was part of the, um, uh, client external relations and client management um, team. So I was leading a lot of external outreach, uh, kind of monitoring and ensuring all the projects, the pro bono projects were happening smoothly. So that involved a lot of like project management, client communication, uh, solving complex problems. So those skills um, were developed in best and they're really helpful. Uh, even to me today, when I have a difficult situation or need to manage a client very carefully, um, those experiences kind of, uh, definitely help with that. Um, and the last thing I would say is um, the network I've built, uh, many of people from the exact team or members, um, later on we became good friends. And we kind of, we're all very career driven and graduating at the same time period, joining firms and companies that are similar um, having that kind of community and sharing information and insights, um, that's a very inspiring experience. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to one of my old friends from um, the same year, and we're talking about how things have changed so much since we graduated and how different or similar our career path have taken us. Um, so I'm pretty sure going forward, these same people that I knew uh, as part of this network will continue to inspire me and provide kind of information and guidance to any future uh, effort I'm putting in. Yeah, that's a great answer. Uh, I think I can actually 
maybe somewhat relate to that. You know, in our current club, we have uh, 16 executive members. And just yesterday alone, you know, you had six or seven people talking about different job postings, trying to help out one another. Uh, just like you said, you know, trying to kind of create that community and create that connection um, among the people that are in your club is super valuable. And I think uh, from my experience and my viewpoint, a lot of people undervalue that and how much it actually offers. So hopefully, again, a lot of people hear that from you and start to uh, more realistically consider the value that that adds, not only now, but exactly like you said, you know, you're still in contact with people who you've known for however many years now. So that's, that's great to hear, honestly, reassuring for me, uh, as well as hopefully encourages a lot of other people to get more involved and continue to grow the networks that they already have. Yeah, and, and I would say, sorry, Luke, I would say in the middle of a pandemic, having a community that you know um, support you is really important, especially, you know, students are taking their classes online. And as great as the courses are, you know, being offered in these great formats online, I think having your peers who you constantly work with uh, in the same cohort of projects or internships, um, I think it provides a lot of mental Benef mental health benefits to our students as well. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great segue into our, our next talking point, um, which is exactly like what you were just talking to, you know, how has mental health really, um, you know, how have you learned to deal with that throughout mm -hmm. your time at university? Uh, yeah. Just like the examples you gave, and then also in your professional career, and, uh, you know, you can choose to, to, focus on the COVID era of mental health or go back to, you know, the normal time, whatever you decide? Yeah. So I would say, um, when I was in school, one constant theme was the conflicting priorities that I had set myself into things like school, um, working with different jobs and, and club involvement, dealing with the projects and supporting clients and students at the same time. So, in the beginning, I was a little bit overwhelmed, but I learned to cope with that by setting up boundaries between different pieces. Um, for example, you know, setting a clear boundary when, um, you know, club involvement stops and you have to take um, the courses seriously. I remember at one point I was spending a lot of time trying to get more clients for for the uh, the the club projects, um, and I realized I wasn't paying enough time and energy to my courses. Um, so I kind of, I, I realized that I stopped right there um, and kind of reset the boundary and the balance between the two um, so that I could also equally succeed in my, in my school. Um, one thing I realized was, was a lot of students get excited over one thing and that's, that's, that's good. That's perfect to have and don't kind of let that go. But at the same time, you know, school is like a marathon. It isn't, getting excited over, it isn't about getting excited over something like overnight and getting it like done really well, but it's also about the, all of the four or five years of experience together. And when you look back at, it, at that, thinking about, you know, what did I accomplish? Um, and the balance view into all of those is definitely a good thing to, um, to have. Um, the other thing I would say is, People like you and me tend to have, um, I don't know if it's the, the wording is proper, but, but like a group thinking, like, you know, we're very career driven. We want to get into specific industries or career roles. Um, sometimes we play that too hard. And I would advise our students to sometimes reach out to students who are a little bit different, you know, who maybe take a different, are from a different school, from a different uh, department and um, have a different perspective about lives or careers or what they want to do. Um, and really think with a more balanced view, you know, um, life isn't just always about graduating with five offers at hand. It's also about making friends, uh, being part of a community and then, learning perspectives that are different from yours. For sure. Yeah, I, I think that advice, hopefully, as I keep saying, you know, gets across. 
I especially think exactly like you said, people get so focused on these huge end goals, uh, specifically usually in the form of, you know, being recruited for these big firms that they actually just lose sight of what's going on in the present. Uh, and it really actually ends up devaluing their university life. Uh, earlier today, actually, I was talking to an individual who takes more of an entrepreneurial mindset to things, tries to start his own businesses and then go from there and has never once uh, worked in a big, large corporate job and throughout university, was never in any clubs. He took a very abstract route and he said that's exactly what worked for him. And I think your point exactly speaks to that. And it's just a matter of finding what works for you and not necessarily taking the the you know exact trail that everyone else does. Uh, so I definitely think that's a great point. And also the point that you mentioned about setting up barriers. Uh, I know Jared, I think, mentioned that a little bit during his interview and kind of just realizing that, you know, there is a time that you need to set aside for things and there's a time mm -hmm. when you need to stop. Yeah, and I want to give you an example of the first thing you mentioned about bringing more diverse subjects and, and perspectives. Um, I the, the most memorable uh, courses that I took in all my four years, I mean, every class has its own benefits, but the thing that I constantly think about was actually one of the economics classes that I took was focused on sports economics, talking about all the like sports leagues and it has nothing to do with my current work. I mean, it's re remotely related as this like the, the economics part of it, but it was so much fun. And I got, I got to network and meet with a lot of students who are enthusiastic about sports. Um, um, that was quite new to me. And that was like a really good addition to my typical, you know, business finance classes. Um, another example would be, I took a physics class, which I never thought I ever would take. And I still don't think it has anything to do with what I'm doing today. Um, but I remember learning about like the earth, the science, the universe. Um, and sometimes it's just nice to learn a little bit extra knowledge about these things. And um, as a well-balanced human being, you know, those things may not directly impact your career, but it makes you a more rounded um, holistic person that um, uh, hopefully you you get to appreciate the value of a, a university degree and it isn't just about a particular topic it's about learning knowledge when when we're very young and having that passion uh, for a lot of things yeah I, I completely agree with that and I think that's actually one of the nice things about the Haskin Consulting Club is we do end up bringing in people from all different faculties. And it's exactly like you said, you know, you get to meet all these different people from different backgrounds. And it's exactly going back to that networking piece and that trying to create a community piece. Uh, I again think another problem business students have is they really silo themselves to only business students, which in many cases is not always the greatest thing. Uh, so that's great to hear uh, that example. I think that, you know, really perfectly actually um, applies to what we're talking about. And that's, that's great to hear from you. And just kind of finishing off here, our, our last question, which is really just, you know, up in the air for you to answer. And that's what advice would you give yourself if you went back to the days that you were in university? What would you say to yourself, whether that's academic advice or advice on extracurriculars or your career? Uh, just really take this question however you want to interpret it. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very tough question because um, it's it's always tricky, you know. What what you know a lot of what if scenarios. What if I did more of this or that? I think one key thing I would give myself advice on would be um embrace two different things um on top of chasing my professional kind of aspirations um i i might have taken more kind of creative side of you know club or involvement like maybe i don't know a dance club or environmental protection initiatives on campus um just so that i get to know like i constantly wonder I was so focused on what I wanted. I knew I, I was 
down this path, you know, chasing my dreams. But I always wonder, you know, what about the other side of this uh, that I never got to experience? Um, could, could, could there be also be anything fun coming out of that? Um, so I would encourage myself, you know, back then to be more curious, um, to be more open-minded to things that I initially don't agree with or don't think is right for me um, and taking more chances. Um, the other thing is, I know a lot of students, um, when they are choosing what kind of courses they want to take, they search online and pick whatever's the easiest path, pass. Um, that makes sense from a kind of an energy and time management perspective. But my perspective now is that you only get to do your undergrad once, unless you want to do it twice. And, but for, for the most of us, you only get to do this once and once it's over, uh, you don't get to do it over again. Um, so rather than choosing whatever's, um, whatever is the easiest and just get, over, get it over with, um, try to challenge yourself a little bit and think about what, what, what actually interests you, what actually is challenging and what actually you will remember after you graduate uh, and find ways to create lasting memories from your school. Um, and I think not only does that help with the overall kind of you know, school goals and your personal uh, char characters, but also it, it, it's a good conversation to have. Like I constantly brag about the sports class I took and everyone was like, okay, none of us have that experience. That's so fun. Um, really set, set, set up some challenges and, and don't really think, you know, all I want is to get to, to finish a degree, get a job um, and kind of prioritize things like that, um, but spend more time and energy on school as well. Um, it is four years, it is 40 courses for most people for a reason. Um, learn to be appreciative of that a little bit more uh, would be my advice for myself. Great. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think a lot of people just want to blow through university. I'm definitely guilty of that. Uh, there are times when I think, you know, oh gosh, can I just get this, this over with right now? And I definitely agree with you. It's something that you really have to put in perspective and realize that this really does only happen once in your life. And, you know, there's probably not going to be another time where you can just sit in a classroom for a few hours every day and learn about something interesting. Um, so I think that's really great advice and definitely something that people need to keep an open mind to. And again, someone like you saying that I hope will really impact the uh, their decision and their thoughts about, you know, what they had previously thought about. Yeah, and I guess if I can give myself another advice, especially in the context today, we're in, in the middle of a pandemic and the economy isn't the, the perfect timing for, for jobs that many of our business students want. Um, be patient and um, don't be too hard on yourselves. Um, I was definitely the, you know, being hard on myself type and I wish I could give myself more room if I encountered fail, when I encountered failures or things that didn't go as planned. Um, give yourself more space for that. Um, it really helps with the mental health, but also it, it, it allows you to understand that, you know, once you graduate, things don't really go as planned. You don't have a, you know, a school agenda that you complete. Things aren't linear anymore. Um, understand that reality is always different, but you should always enjoy every part of your school or career, whatever that brings you, just um, happily take it. Um, that's, that's something I, I was very hung up on. I have to get this job. I have to be involved in this project. Um, and I'm not saying that's bad, um, but the chances in the next couple of years, students are gonna find job looking is going to be more and more difficult. Um, allow yourself to, um, to get comfortable around these uncertainties and things will eventually get better. I'm very confident about the future and I'm even more confident about the future of our students at this, the consulting club. Uh, I know you all work really hard um, and I deeply believe all of you having the ability to achieve your dreams at some point in the future. 
Yeah, thank you for that, Ryan. That's that's really nice, actually. And I think, you know, hopefully uh, a lot of people, again, will hear you out on that. And we really appreciate you saying that. And of course, we really appreciate you being here today and sharing uh, sharing your thoughts with us. You know, we got to hear a lot about you. We got to hear about your first few years in school, your last few, your thoughts kind of on mental health during your time at university. And then of course, your last few pieces of advice, you know, which I think the real key takeaways are, don't put yourself in, you know, too much pressure. And of course, we talked about, you know, kind of enjoy that experience and enjoy the time you have at university. I think, uh, you know, hopefully a lot of people will take away some really great thoughts from today. And again, we just want to thank you so much for, for being a part of this. And, you know, hopefully, like the consulting club, we can continue to grow this initiative. Thank you. I'm very happy that I was invited. And um, uh, if there's anything else, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to get involved. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thanks.